Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to be talking about a book called The Employees by Olga Raven, translated by uh, Martin Aiken from Danish. It was a shortlisted or longlisted book on the International Booker Prize this year, but it did not win. I can definitely see why it was considered though. This is a fantastic book. The subtitle of the book is a workplace novel of the 22nd century. The inciting incident is that the crew of the 6,000 ship consists of uh, people who are both man-made and birthed. This distinction apparently matters somewhat, but these people go to an unknown planet. They find these objects there and retrieve them, bringing them into their ship again. In so doing, their relationships to each other, how they feel, and the relationship to the ship itself changes. And through a uh, assortment of statements taken from the crew to an individual that we can kind of discern as uh, HR, basically, human resources, and a, a liaison with a company that has designed the program uh, that all of these people use in order to do work and to uh, go about their business and ostensibly go to different planets and retrieve objects. We don't really have that much information uh, about their directives, but we can tell because of what they have done and this inciting incident that this is probably uh, the first sort of mission that this crew in particular has gone on, though not necessarily the company at large. What begins to unravel through these statements, which are um, seem to progress in a linear manner, more or less, some of the statements are missing. It jumps around in numbers, um, and it, they do track the statement numbers from uh, a linear progression and it regresses and continues, but the overall narrative, though the statements go back and forth in number, and ostensibly that means that they were taken at previous times and at future times, form a narrative that is more or less linear to consume though. And so there is a kind of plot to this novel, though it is more like the inciting incident for the plot is what the main thrust of this novel is trying to examine. This novel is a rather scathing uh, and fun to consume critique of how we have um, institutional hierarchies and post-capitalism in general. And sort of, while I was at least consuming it, a critique of science fiction, especially shows like Star Trek or uh, other s general notions of how humans might relate to each other in a confined space, a uh, space like a ship and going and doing these particular types of missions. Uh, it is the first novel that I've read that sort of critiques the notion that humans have the awareness or knowledge of constructing a space in which they would function uh, even somewhat organically, holistically, and in a nourishing sort of relationship that they might form with those people that they have in their family at uh, on Earth and at home and with their the spaces that they've constructed there and just how humanity in its general um, goings-on is able to relate to the space that we have here and what that means for us uh, at a systemic level. The complex dynamics that we have here on Earth and on our planet, uh, to be able to assert that you'd be able to recreate that on a, in a little small tube or whatever, a ship in space, uh, no matter how many rooms it has or how big it is, uh, to be able to have the hubris to uh, say that you have designed this space in an optimal kind of way in which 
humanity would organically just be able to transition into going into this sort of generational type ship and function normally without, you know, mishaps or, or more likely huge issues is a, a very entertaining one and also something that, you know, Star Trek and whatnot completely dismiss when they're going about their utopian type of uh, view when they're constructing their narratives. They're not concerned at all with the relationship between space and a uh, person. And then in this ship, we also have uh, non-birthed people who seem like they're sort of androids. Some people seem like they're completely alien. Um, it's not super codified as far as I'm aware, but regardless, with those dynamics at play, it's a interesting way to create tension right away in the narrative because you know right away from the inception that all of these statements are taken from an individual that's a liaison with an HR person and company that probably things are not going to go so well because as I said, the company probably wouldn't have the wherewithal to be able to create a conducive space in which this type of work is actually happening. And also the statements are sort of slowly ramping up the tension because the incident of these objects are affecting them deeply, sometimes in disturbing ways, sometimes, sometimes in more like normal ways, but there's always a change and that sort of creates a cascade in the systems that the workflow and uh, programming create. And so as the people on the ship are changed and the program thrown out of whack, this sort of chronicles that cascade and what happens. So it's a very psychological and sociologically uh, focused book. The pros are fantastic. I found that it ranged quite well. Uh, she is able to swap voices very elegantly. Some people are very profound. Some people are sort of um, disaffected. And all of the tones kind of come together to create a nuance of a single event. The physical objects that are retrieved from the planet themselves sound very interesting, but I just really like the objects as a metaphor or an allegory uh, for the representation of the physical space on the ship changing. And no matter how small or large that would be, the dynamics being thrown off and how it's impossible or more or less impossible, they obviously haven't done it in this case at least, uh, to create circumstances or a process, a program, or workflow, or whatever, that would allow for foreign, any kind of foreign body, physical objects, physical or other circumstances, whatever, to occur to these people, uh, even under scientific rigor, it's impossible to know what sort of circumstances the people would be encountering, not only in a generational type of way on a ship for that long, as well as going to alien ecosystems and whatnot, which the ecosystem question isn't even put into the book. I think it would be way too much to consider when it's already bringing a lot of ideas into uh, the narrative. So I think it's just a, a really brilliant way of making it apparent that the physical objects alien as they are, are modifying circumstances, but this could be basically anything at all. Their relationship with the human resource person is also quite nuanced. You can see the troubles that the people are having in just their sort of desperate need to convey exactly what they are thinking and feeling to another individual. So it, from the things that are said, which in some circumstances is very little, what the white space, what they aren't saying is far more interesting and it leads you to springboard off of to construct 
uh, what this space and what these relationships with the company are and what the program itself actually is, which is a very interesting way of telling a story and a really smart way of allowing the reader to come to certain conclusions about the human resources person. Some people are openly confiding in them. Sometimes they're treating the person as like a therapist or a psychologist that they're seeing. Sometimes they're openly hostile to it because they recognize as, uh, this person as a authoritative figure. And so through all of these different nuances, we never get the actual reply from the human resource person for some reason. It is a recording strictly of what the other crew members are saying, which again creates a really unique and interesting relationship there. In this case, I don't actually even want to talk about spoilers of the book. I would rather uh, leave it as a sort of cliffhanger-ish type thing where uh, you're enticed to go read the book because there is a lot of subjective components to it, which is appealing to my literary tastes. Um, but also the ending has a sort of uh, finality and sense of conclusion that only comes from not divulging the ending. And it's not like, I wouldn't call it like a twist or something. I would say that it is more expert storytelling uh, where the final chapter, when you actually close the book, is just like a chef kiss kind of moment. So I ended up giving this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was incredible. It was riveting. I read it in one sitting. I didn't really even read the back to know what it was about. All I knew is that it involved aliens. It had an interesting structure in the sense that it was all uh, constructed from statements of the crew and then nothing else. So I think the less you know about the book in this particular case, the better. Uh, but I think it is incredibly effective storytelling. I think the structure uh, made me feel like I was on my toes and trying to figure out things uh, in the same way that I engage with like a mystery. The actual construction of the, the premise is interesting in of itself, but the way in which the physical objects are used to uh, signal to the reader what our relationships to space, environment, uh, time, and basically everything that a corporation probably wouldn't consider when constructing a program like this is fascinating, interesting, something I haven't really consumed before. This is a f the most interesting crew on a spaceship type of setup book that I've ever consumed. So if any of that sounds uh, interesting to you, I hope that you will nab it. I had to get it off of Book Depository. It's not available in Canada, at least when I did it. And of course, being in Canada, it took like a month to get here and then it took a little while to get to. Give a warning if you're gonna do spoilers in the comments, uh, but I'd love to know what you thought of the book. If you have other uh, recommendations for me based on the fact that I love this book, I'd love to hear those as well. And I hope you're doing well. Winter is coming, so bundle up here in Canada. It has already snowed once and it's getting pretty gloomy. I have to pick the time of day in which to uh, film these videos and it's when the sun is sort of like hitting the blinds which changes all of the time now because it's getting darker so fun times are ahead i'm the only canadian that hates winter